Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I have a uh, ski do over here and it the electric start isn't working and the reverse isn't working so we're gonna try to figure out what that is a lot of people have that issue i actually had two sleds in this week that had that same issue so let's take a look at it so i have my kill switch pulled up and i got nothing okay so if you're out on the trail or even in the shop i mean i tried this as soon as i got home one thing you could try is just jumping the starter relay and this is pretty much going to give you a good idea on whether or not you have battery voltage, your starter is working, it's gonna take all the controls and the solenoid out of the equation, and it's just gonna give you some a rough idea of what's actually working. Go ahead, and you're gonna to wanna to jump these two terminals. Make sure you're not touching any grounds. Oh. So mine runs like that. What does that mean? That means that my battery is good, my starter is good, and all the heavy voltage stuff in this system works completely fine, and there's no need to look forward into that. Now, what we need to look into at this point is, is this solenoid getting triggered? And if this solenoid is getting triggered, is the solenoid responding to that? Of course, if that solenoid jumping trick didn't work, what you're going to want to check next is your battery. And then after that, if your battery is good, you know, give it a good charge, maybe try to jump it off another sled. Other sleds usually are not enough to jump one of these snowmobiles. Leave it on a charger, get a jump pack, something like that. And then check if you're getting voltage at the starter. There's a big red pin on the starter. Check if you're getting voltage over there and maybe tap the starter a little bit and see if it'll kick over. If none of that works, it, there's a good chance it's your starter or some of the wiring going to the starter. Obviously now is a good time to check all your fuses. So that's good. And that's good. Luckily, these e -techs don't have any relays, so that's that makes this whole job a lot easier. A solenoid such as this is basically an electromagnet that pulls in a high current circuit. So you have a, a set of contacts, and all you do is when you energize the magnet, it pulls a set of contacts together. So obviously, you need to just apply power and ground to this, and it'll close. One of these is going to be ground. I'm assuming this top orange one is going to be ground. So with my test light on the power pin right there. We're gonna see if we have ground. Okay, so we have ground. The red wire is gonna be your switch power from your start button. So my test, my test lead is on the negative and I have it on this red wire here. My switch is pulled up and let's check. Press on the button, I got nothing. Obviously you just wanna give your wiring a quick visual check over all the way through, you know, you want you know, good ground and then nothing stupid, uh, like any brakes or anything like that. But further than that, we're going to need to start getting into the actual start bucket button circuit. So we got some of the plastics off, um, basically just a headlight housing. And uh, this three pole connector is going to be your start switch button. If I can get it off one handed. All right, there it is. So this is your start button connector. A little messy over here, so I apologize for it. Your start switch is unplugged now. And the way I'm testing this is just for continuity. This is a single pole double throw switch, which means the switch has two positions, a normally closed and a normally open position, hence three wires, unless you won't see three wires on a single pole, single throw switch, unless it just want, like has an LED on it or something like that. I have just two pieces of wire stripped and stuck in there and I have my alligator clamps on. I have my meter on continuity. So the two outside terminals, one and three should have continuity when the button is pressed and not have continuity when the button is not pressed. So I'm pressing the button now and we have continuity. That's good. And like I said, single pole, double throw. So you will have, this might be a little tough, but you'll have continuity here when the button is not pressed. So between the black wire and the white wire or pin one and two, you will have continuity and in no other configurations. So now that I have this sled jump, I want to show you what pin is supposed to have power. Um, it's just going to be this pin number three on the harness side, not the switch side. You come in here, I'm just checking for power and I have power. So this one, a little bit of a tricky diagnosis because I have a switch that works. I have wiring that is good up to it. I have power at the switch. I have a seemingly good solenoid you could have jumped the solenoid to check with actually powered up the solenoid to check 
But I didn't even bother doing that because it's not getting power to it. So there's one last thing I'm going to try, and I'm pretty sure it's actually this from the start. I just did want to go through all of the steps. I haven't seen this too often, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this fuse. It tested good, but it doesn't look amazing. So with that fuse jumped, let's see how it does. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, that one was luckily cheap for me. Um, hopefully it's not your switch because that is a little expensive and hopefully it's not a wild electrical goose chase. Like if you're on the trailer or something like that, you could always jump it just in case you don't have a pull start or something like that. And I guess just remember if fuse test good, it still might not be good. I mean, some of these look bad. These sleds are in a lot of nasty environments, I guess. Thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment if I missed anything or you see something you didn't like. Thanks. Bye.